triumphant from the dead. He rose the prince of life and peace and slammed the day forever his. This is the Lord hath made and all may see Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord appeared, 
in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have the fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peter God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The next day, the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there. They themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum, looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. The Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Please join in hymn number 690, God Thou Great Jehovah, verse 3, in number 690. and has many barriers, social, economic, even theological. And over the last year and a half, we've shared a lot. We've shared a widespread fear and suffering. And it's had a major impact on us, not to be denied. Uh, Princeton University had a recent study that came out that showed that the average life expectancy in the United States has gone down 1.5 years because of something called deaths of despair. The question before us as Christians, can we let the unity of our suffering become a unity of compassion and a unity of love for one another? Can we expand our definition of how we think of caring for our neighbor, expand it across fences, walls, and barriers. 
Now, at this zero hour of our coming back together, seems like a perfect time to relook at that. Even if we don't come back as completely as we might hope, we are here together now to reconsider this notion of what it means to come back together in love. And in the gospel today, we see those that remain on the shore after Jesus and the disciples left, turn and follow to be reunited with Jesus. They realized they, had, they, had, they were separated, they had lost out, and they turned and they followed. And they came to the one they knew would give them bread and life. And to turn and follow, according to our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, in his book, Love is the Way, this is the first and most crucial step that we can take in our, step, in our journey to faith. Now, I know some people, I've read it several times, and I have to confess right now that I have not finished it all. <laughs> but this week, I bumped into something that the uh, presiding bishop wrote that broke it down into seven essential steps. And I thought, well, that's just perfect. Why don't we take each step each week that I'm here? And by the miracle of the gospel, each gospel lesson will fit perfectly with those steps. <laughs> And I hope you find it so. <laughs> <laughs> so, according to the presiding bishop, our very first step is to turn and follow. To choose to turn and follow Jesus. He writes, with God's help, we can choose to turn from the powers of fear, injustice, sin, oppression, and turn our lives to Jesus Christ in freedom, truth, and hope, falling in love with Jesus again and again. And that's exactly what those who were left on the shore did. They chose to turn and follow by boat. How they found enough boats to take 5,000 across the sea is a mystery, but they chose to follow, and they honored a holy calling, a holy calling of the Spirit to follow. And they knew they'd be welcomed because all of them, just as we do every Sunday, received without question the bread of life from Christ. They knew that they would be received, that they would be welcomed. Jesus fulfills his promise as he wrote, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This bread and this wine, of course, are much more than we or they could have ever imagined. This is earthly presence transcending into the holiness of Christ to be shared and be given as new life from God <laughs> through his Son. And when we share that bread in body and belief, we grow into the one, into the one body of Christ, one spirit, one faith, one baptism, one God of all. And by sharing this table of creation, we do the work of God to believe and to come together in love. And turning and finding a place at God's table is to seize the freedom that God gives us to love one another without fences, without barriers, without walls, to see with new eyes our neighbor, all our neighbors, to regard one another with the bold vision that's written in an old Jewish proverb, before every person there marches an angel proclaiming, behold the image of God. Moses came to lead his people out of slavery in Egypt. Jesus came to give freedom to all, to everyone. And freeing us to choose our life in a new direction, to live wholeheartedly, to redefine what it means to care for our neighbors, 
to recognize neighbors not by where they live, but by our hearts, to be able to say, all is welcome here. Jesus frees us, allows us to let go of the heavy burden of judgment, hatred, resentment. To be able to see both the humanity and the divinity in everyone. How freeing it is to let judging be done by God and not by us. This, however, is not what we learn in the ways of the world. We were all taught good fences make good neighbors. Of course, in the physical property of things, we need barriers and we need boundaries for property and livelihood and safety, to be pools. But what matters is that Jesus is calling us to are matters of the heart and mysteries of Christianity. But it's not easy to adopt the ways of love. Seeing one another with fresh eyes changes our relationship with the world that may bother some. Those who remain back on the shore. <clears throat> but this is our holy calling. Our way to grow in every way into Christ, from whom whose body we are knit and joined together. As the Reverend Dr. Holmes, Barbara Holmes wrote, ultimately, we must trust the leading of the Holy Spirit as it guides us toward mutual care and love of God, neighbors, and creation. And I don't think there's probably a better example than any of us could think of than the food programs, the ones that you have here and you share with other churches and people of faith. There is something about people coming around to share food around a table that intermingles and entangles givers and receivers as one. It's such a witness of God's abundance. I remember once a member of a church uh, where, I was, where I used to assist asking me once, you know, it seems like we're here the, serving at the kitchen. We might be getting more out of this than the people who come for the food. Is that okay? <laughs> it is freedom and joy to give wholeheartedly to our neighbors. And that leads to a question that we might ponder this week. Who might we turn to and offer ourselves as a new neighbor in love? Let us seize this moment of unity to share freely with one another the joy of Christ's eternal presence, a new and abounding in his offer of living bread to all who believe. Amen. 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 We'll take two minutes of silence.
now stay together nicely. Thank you. Thank you.
Hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who protect us from danger and those who labor to keep us healthy. For those who serve in the military, for firefighters, police officers, nurses, doctors, and for everyday heroes whose courage inspires us, especially Devin, Corey, Nathan, Chris, Josh, Matthew, Keith, Jack, Joe, Jason, Ryan, George, Jared, Andrew, and those you name either silently or aloud. Lord, hear our prayer. We, uh, we thank God for our loved ones who dwell eternally in that place where there's no pain or grief, and where Christ's presence, light, and peace reign forever. We pray especially for those you name either silently or aloud. Lord, hear our prayer. Our hearts rejoice in the risen Jesus, who prepares us for the many challenges we face, and who gently guides us into each new day. May we live confidently in the knowledge that Jesus will never leave us or forsake us, and that in baptism we have been marked as Christ's own forever. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, receive this day our prayers, both spoken and silent. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most Lord, 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 God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are this our heart.
back on Wednesday night and Thursday morning, as we've been doing. And we want to start doing it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I also have an announcement. As we acknowledged during the prayers of the people, Harriet is starting the first chapter of her next phase in life today. And of course, that means that we are too. Um, she's no longer with us, and we send her off with our prayers and love and appreciation for all that she did with us. And um, <clears throat> we look ahead to what comes next for incarnation. I am happy to be able to tell you that Vestry has found the person that we believe God is calling to incarnation to be our next priest. And I invite you to uh, watch this space and watch your email for additional details that will be coming in uh, the days and weeks to come. Uh, but know that uh, we believe that we have found uh, the right person and look forward to introducing that person to you when the moment is right. Thank you. Just mention Julia. Please sit down.
You made us into your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing.
of God for the people of God, Christ our Passover, the sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Please feel free to come up. You can kneel or stand as you prefer. <clears throat> Yes, sir.
Save us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Please join in singing hymn number 411, O Bless the Lord My Soul, verse 1, 2, and 3, hymn number 411. Thanks be to God.